Hello, welcome. <laughs> mm-hmm. Welcome to tonight's stream. This is uh, Monday, so we're going to be kicking things off. Hopefully, a very productive start to your week. Uh, our last session was on Tuesday. Or actually, uh, an attempted session was on Wednesday that couldn't end up happening because of technical issues. Um, oof. We've identified what those technical issues are and hopefully shouldn't happen again. I hope you all liked the intro. That's a new intro that we're working on. Um, the main reason is to give you a behind the scenes look at what 10K designers is like, what design is like, what um, a day in my life is like. So over the next couple of streams, we're going to be changing that up. We're going to be trying a few different intros. Since that's a new intro, we need to go through the experimentation process to find one that's nice. So welcome. Tonight, we're going to be talking about design. However, tonight, we'll give you a chance to ask questions, right? For the most part, I don't have anything prepped for tonight's session. Tonight is going to be a back and forth interview, back and forth Q&A type of session. A lot of folks, by the way, a lot of you have applied for 10K Designers cohort and a lot of you have received your acceptance emails either just today or on Friday. So welcome to all of you. Uh, welcome to all of you who are now officially enrolled in the cohort. Over the next couple of uh, days, weeks, we'll be helping you figure out what we need to do next. July 25th is when cohort four starts of the UI UX design program. Applications are still open. However, it's on a rolling basis. So a lot of those, a lot of the seats have already been um, given to other folks, right? So let's get started. Let's get started. One of the things, um, let's do a quick recap. Okay, let's do a quick recap to talk about some of the things we've covered in the last couple of streams. Because yes, it has been a while since we last spoke. It does feel that way at least. Right, so we did, um, let's see, let's look here. Last Monday, this is what we did. This was last Monday. Amazing sessions. This was actually one of my favorite sessions so far. I think people really enjoyed it. And I also, personally me, the reason I enjoyed it was I could finally talk about our snapshot survey. It's not a, <laughs> still loading. Um, give me one sec. Here we go. Yeah, this finally gave us gave me a chance to talk about this uh, snapshot survey. So I'm happy we did this video. So this was on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, we had a session, but um, it's not really here because we had technical difficulties and we had to postpone it. So we did about 10, 15 minutes and then we had to just postpone that. So that's not on here. But to sort of um, make up for that, we had another video, this was on Thursday, which was investing in yourself, designing your career. And hopefully this was useful to a lot of you, even if you're not already designers. We talk about this very um, interesting way of how you can design your own career. Um, I've had some amazing conversations. A lot of people send me feedback after this saying, you know, they really enjoyed it. And one thing that stood out, you know, in one of the conversations, was this idea that we don't really try to design our own career. A lot of the times it's decided for us. So it is a new thing for a lot of folks to be able to design their own career. And it's a very hard thing, I will say that, but good news is that it's getting easier because you have stuff like this where you can discover new fields. So the thing I wanted to say was, it's very important for you to design your own career. And if you don't design your own career, let me actually phrase that in a better way. It's very important to design your own career 
if you don't somebody else will design it for you that somebody else might be your parents which is they are like hey you're not figuring it out let us figure it out for you right best intentions it might be your the society it might just be in general you end up doing something because everybody else is doing it so definitely being able to design your own career and investing in yourself not everybody gets the chance to do it and you know i consider myself very lucky that i was able to do it right although i was self taught went through a lot of struggles and i also consider myself lucky that i'm able to help a lot of other people do it right so it's the journey it's the journey right eventually when you finally figure it out you're going to look back at all these moments before and um, whatever i don't want to get into that okay so we're going to do some q and a today okay a lot of people asking <laughs> asking for tattoo reveal uh no tattoo reveal bro i don't want to it is it is here if you can see the reflection back there i got it in this area this <laughs> but no guys i'm not going to be revealing it it's still healing uh maybe at some point i will but uh, not for now a few questions here how do i apply for the program so real quick let me tell you all i think most of you are familiar but the way to apply is actually to go through the application process right here and eventually once you've done this once you've read it all there's an apply now button right here just hit that apply now button and we'll take it forward applications are on a rolling basis a lot of people um, might not be familiar with what that is but what that means is every single week we have some set of applications that we accept right and we go through rigorously going through each application sometimes i do discuss this with my team as well once we figure that out roughly every week we send out a new set of application emails um, i think last week was a bit delayed if i'm not wrong uh, but yeah so applications are still open it is not too late do apply we we're trying our best to you know make sure the best folks get in not just you know the people who applied first folks who didn't get a response doesn't mean you're not selected i will say most likely it means you're not selected right it's not a guarantee the reason you didn't get a response was either you didn't make it through the first round of applications which is compared to everybody's application yours wasn't um it wasn't complete enough right the application is what we use to understand whether you'd be a good fit so if your answers are not enough that could be one reason but the second reason is even if it didn't make it through the first round of screening we do go back through all applications and every week we send out a new set of acceptance emails So if you haven't received it you might receive it before we start before the start which is around July 25th and um, if you think your application wasn't good you didn't submit a good one you can always resubmit and we'll take that into consideration as well but before that um i mean that's roughly it okay um other than that keep an eye out on your inboxes but let's now talk about some q&a right so i'm going to take a couple of questions from here we've already started on this path but let me talk to you a little bit about what we're planning to cover in the next couple of sessions right today or rather tonight i don't think we'll go that deep but hopefully we we'll, we go broad tonight and the next coming sessions again we start going deep into the stuff that we have planned so let me just real quick tell you what we have coming up the session on um, wednesday that we actually couldn't do was actually one of the ones i was looking forward to the most that session was called how much money can you make as a designer not how much money do designers make how much money can you make as a designer what's the firstly average and then what is the top what's the what's the peak of what you can make is there a peak right where does it sort of go this thing and unfortunately we couldn't do that but we will do that um this week i think either tomorrow or day after we're going to be doing that session overall um i think that's a very interesting one because we talk about money 
we talk about the different paths you have available, whether it's a job, starting your own thing, freelancing. And then we talk a little bit about um, how much money you can make. A lot of folks don't know, but the top designers in the industry do make more than a crore a year. Yes, you heard that right. More than a crore a year. A crore, for those of you who are not familiar with the rupees, is about 150K, more than 150K USD a year. However, a lot of that is um, salaries plus ESOPs. ESOPs is when you get equity in a company. And that's one of the biggest reasons for joining startups. Because when you get equity in a company and as that company grows and as you grow with it, you can really, really get a really good outcome. Um, especially, you know, um, talking about current news, we've got we've got two IPOs coming up, right? If I'm not if I'm not wrong, Zomato and one more. I don't remember exactly. But when these kind of IPOs happen or when buybacks happen, I think some company announced buybacks of their share. Uh, maybe it was ShareChat, if I'm not wrong. But when buybacks happen, when IPOs happen, it's a event that really helps you, that really adds money to the ecosystem. It's a, it's a good way to reward people who took those early bets getting into startups. And that can be a really solid, reliable way um, <laughs> to grow rich as a designer, right? Just salary alone, I don't think you can go to that heights. Uh, I think it's Paytm. Yes, yes, it's Paytm. Yeah. But uh, with ESOPs, it's going to be crazy, right? And when something like this happens, when a big IPO kind of events happen, all the employees who have ESOPs end up making a lot of money and that money goes back into the startup ecosystem. It means more people willing to take risks to start new companies, which is good news for us because it means hiring more designers. And for those of you who want to start your own thing, right, who might want to go down the venture funded route of starting your own startup, this is good news because a new, you know, hundreds or maybe thousands of new angel investors get created almost overnight. So, that's, that's amazing news to look out for. We will be talking about that maybe a little deeper um, when we finally do that session. Ah, yes, Barbecue Nation too. Barbecue Nation also had a, um, had or is having an IPO. I am not too familiar though. Cred did a buyback. Yes, I think Cred Cred and Unacademy, I think, are doing buybacks every year. If you look at the past few when buybacks have happened. So that is really, really good. Um, that actually sets a good precedent for the industry, which is more people will want to join companies that do buybacks, right? Because an IPO event can take a while. It can take 5, 10, 20 years to happen. But a buyback means this amount that you vested they buy it back from you and you actually make that money. So it's definitely a very positive trend. I think more companies are going to do it, which is great news for designers. Because one thing that designers starting out don't get, okay? This is, I'm going to take a small tangent here. What's the, <laughs> a lot of noise outside my window. What's the value that a designer adds to a startup? What's the value a, a designer adds to a startup, right? For a lot of people, they think it's making the product, making the screens, right? Doing the design work. But you have to understand that UI UX design, also known as product design, you are designing products. These products solve a problem. They get used by hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, and eventually, you know, if you're if the startup is successful, millions of users. The product that you've designed, used by millions of users, and that helps the business grow, right? So you as a designer have a very, very important role to play in the growth of startups. Design work is not just screens. It's actually adding growth to a company. And when you look at startups, it's a very competitive environment. And something like design can really help startups get almost an unfair advantage, a competitive advantage, right? Nobody wants to use apps that are badly designed, right? It's become the minimum now. We talked about that, I think, maybe in the first session. 
but um, very exciting times, very exciting times to be a designer, but also for the startup ecosystem. Thank you, Janardhan, <laughs> for the super chat. Janardhan is, um, for those of you not familiar, Janardhan is one of the mentors at um, the UI UX design program at 10K Designers. And Janardhan and I have worked together at Unacademy. I can't see your sticker, Janardhan, but <laughs> it says Shiba, Bog, Shiba Dog bowing respectfully. Awesome. Janardhan, I am looking forward to um, the start of Cohort 4. Um, I think one of the one of the most fun parts for me for running the cohort is that it's not a solo activity anymore. Which is back when I started, when it was just me, when I had just quit my job at Unacademy and I was like, should I have to figure all this out? How do I do it? Fast forward from there, now every single cohort, the way we sort of imagine it, the way we visualize it, is that there's a campus, there's an entire campus where you're learning stuff. You have a lot of these events going on, like this event right here, for example. You've got these classrooms where you have the actual cohort stuff going on as well. And we really focus on getting mentors into our program, right? These mentors give feedback, but they're also people you can learn from. So I think roughly we have a one is to three student to mentor ratio. So we had a ton of mentors. We have a ton of mentors from some amazing companies, including Janardhan. So that I feel is one of the things people enjoy the most about the cohort experience, which is getting to talk to and work with these designers who worked at amazing companies. Um, if you're interested, if you want to do a little snooping, you want to see who the mentors are, you can check this out. We've recently published this page. I think by recently, I mean maybe two months ago, but we now have profiles. So you can actually check out who exactly are your mentors. A lot of these people will be participating in future cohorts. So here, for example, Zainab is an alumni mentor. So she was a part of the program. She now works at ClearTax and she returns. Um, she's hanging out on campus. That's the simple model that I will say. Let's talk a few more questions. Okay, let's take a few more questions. Um, I've missed out. So let me scroll a little ba back up. What are the roles that a UI UX designer takes on in their career? I would say this is a not an easy question to answer, right? So I will need to ask back and forth, but to give you a simple answer for this, a designer is someone who is a problem solver, right? The way you solve problems, the outcome, the solutions are the screens, the services, the products that you create. Um, most designers start off in a very individual contributor type of role. And, and the things that are useful to work in such, just, such an environment, even if you're a, you are an individual contributor, are the things we talked about in one of the previous streams. Articulation, being able to work with the tools, of course, understanding what exactly is the role of a designer in this bigger ecosystem within a company and in the startup ecosystem as well. All of these, those things together um, do contribute the role a designer plays in the beginning. Maybe I didn't understand your question correctly, but I'll try to attempt a good answer. And beyond that, there's a lot of other types of roles designers get because these skills that we talked about, those 12 skills that we covered in the snapshot survey video, those skills are very, very valuable even outside of a design context. So those skills, as long as you keep building on top of that, right? The kinds of roles designers can get into, one is of course, leadership and management, which is the better you're able to do some of those things, the more effective of a leader you can become, right? And technically there's a se separate set of skills that you then start building. If that's the direction you're going, leadership, but design leadership is, a, is an amazing role as well. Like me, I can tell you, on Academy was maybe my first official um, design leadership kind of role. Although before that, at my own startup, I was also managing a team. And the difference between an individual contributor and a manager, I think a lot of you will find this useful because the question people ask is, how do I find which company is a good fit? 
And you know, the answer is the people you'll be working with. The difference between a good manager and a bad manager, that's something that we can talk about. But overall, whenever you're joining a company, you're going to be spending hours of your week with that company, with those people, thinking about the kind of stuff they do. So you really want to maximize the kinds of people you work with. And a good manager, a good leader, I can tell you in general, is responsible for how well their team performs. A lot of us have the misconception that a manager is somebody who gets you to do work, <laughs> right? Um, maybe maybe a lot of you have been through placements, have gone through maybe some MNCs, um, maybe some mass hiring, hiring companies. Maybe you've heard about how things are like at maybe Infosys, TCS, companies that you're familiar with. And you're like, dude, my manager is kind of a bitch or kind of a... <laughs> It's very different, okay? A design manager is somebody who is not just somebody who tells you to do work. They're not somebody who just manages deadline. A manager is responsible for helping you produce your best work, which means, of course, giving you feedback, but also figuring out what is it that blocks you and helping you unblock so you can make the best work of your life. So to give you an example at Unacademy, when we first started, the team was really small. So I did a lot of the hands-on work, like actually designing. But as the team gets bigger, the transition happens where you have to now start figuring out how your team is performing. And to me, I found that to be one of the most fulfilling and satisfying experiences, which is number one, to be able to work with really talented designers, right? So I was in charge of hiring, finding really good people. And number two, being able to play that part where you're able to help them achieve an amazing outcome, right? Whether that's the final product or just improvements in that process. So I found that super, super um, satisfying. That's one of the reasons why I started 10K Designers because I really, really enjoy um, helping other designers figure stuff out. Uh, for me, it's not really an, a solo individual journey as a designer, because for me, the way I see it is my next um, level that I need to unlock or have unlocked, but the direction I'm moving towards is being able to, is not really individual design work, although I still do that, but being somebody who can help number one set direction for a lot of other designers and then help them through the things that I have been through myself, such that they don't have to repeat the exact same shit, <laughs> the exact same mistakes or, you know, um, all of that stuff. So I will maybe talk about that in a future lesson, but I love that. I love that part of being able to mentor. Let me, um, let me take a few more questions. Okay. Um, <laughs> networking has started before the cohort. Hell yeah. There's a lot of people here, um, who have made it through. So looking forward to interacting all, with all of you on zoom. One of the things that I sort of miss with these YouTube ones, but really looking forward to July is that being on zoom, right? And the fun part is it's not just zoom as you would imagine a meeting where you just sit and watch, but we've sort of figured out how do you make Zoom events an activity where you can actually participate, where you actually have something going on, where it's way more interesting than watching a movie on Netflix, right? It's not just sitting back and eating popcorn. It's an active experience because let's face it, learning the tools, you can do it by yourself as well, but everything else, collaboration, working with other people, being able to speak effectively, all of those other things, it only comes with active participation. Hmm. So let's take a few more questions. Okay. Hmm. I will, um, I saw one here. Yes, see you all on the 10K campus, for sure. I'm missing a few questions. Let me take some time to scroll. 
What's the third locked cohort? Very interesting. Um, the third locked cohort right here, we'll be launching this. See, the thing is, um, since this is a new cohort, we might not, in fact, both of these, we might not launch them. Um, we might do some experiments around this. Since they're the first cohort, we need to go through that uh, building cycle of building something, getting some feedback and turning it. So these are currently a work in progress. We have opened applications. However, we're still thinking about um, what the best first cohort experience will be, cohort one experience. And we might be doing a lot of, actually we will be doing a lot of free content and live streams. This event that you're a part of, these live streams, we might have a similar one for these as well. Like a small experience that firstly helps us test some of this material out, but helps you understand what it is. So this, we actually want to launch it this week, uh, maybe on one of these streams, but I can't tell you right now. <laughs> a lot of people know what this is already. So if you ask around, you will get an answer, but uh, yeah. Hmm. Let's take a few more questions. Great question by Pratik. How do I know that they can be a good team member before joining a company? I think this is a very important question from both perspectives. Number one, if you are ever hiring for your team, what should you look for? I can help you answer that because I have hired a lot, you know, as part of my previous role at an academy. But number two is if you are somebody who's applying for roles, what can you do to make yourself stand out from all the other applicants to get the attention of the person who's hiring? I think in general, let me be specific here, right? How do I know they can be a good team member, right? Everything else being equal. Um, let's say your design skills are good. You worked on some stuff before you have a good portfolio. A lot of companies have something called a culture fit. You might've heard this term before. Um, a lot of people unfortunately get rejected or don't make it through because of this culture fit thing. And it's very hard to exactly understand what culture fit means. But in general, what it comes down to, um, it's a bunch of factors, but one of those factors is this, which is how good are they as a team member, which is even if as a solo person, you are a rock star, you're like, you're amazing. At some point you will need to work with other people that other people might be your design team. It might also be developers. Even if you have an amazing design, but you can't communicate with developers and you can't get to that point where you can, you know, talk to them. If they ask you something, you answer that question, you work through back and forth. If you're not able to do that, you can have a challenge at a company. So how do they know this? Very difficult, right? Um, it's almost like you want to know what this person's personality is like, what their communication is like. And of course, if they've done this before, that's the clearest signal, right? So in an interview process, questions around this, which is tell me more about your project and tell me more about the part where this happened, this happened, like specific questions. This is typically what people are trying to gauge. And I can tell you this, this is not something you can prepare for. If you've done it, you've done it. If you've not done it, you've just not done it, right? Work towards it. But definitely this is not something you can read cracking the design interview or something and just make it through, right? It's not, it's not, there's no correct answers. People want to know your answer. So that's the, that's the tricky part about interviewing. Yo, super chat on super chat from Janardhan. Should money or salary be the primary focus when getting into the field? I can say this. If that's your main reason for even wanting to learn design, I think it might not be a good uh, motive because it does take time for you to get to that point where you're good. So for a lot of people, money um, definitely helps, but here's the thing, here's the thing. If you're focused on a certain outcome, you will always be stressed, right? Not just for Janardhan, but for everybody who's thinking about this. If you're focused on a certain outcome, which is I want to make a shit ton of money, 
And that's an outcome that you're focused. Like it's a point in the future. You are always going to not enjoy your current moment. You're always going to be thinking about, you know, shit, it's not here yet. I'm waiting for that point. And that can really take you out of being able to get the learnings, right? In the end, you have to enjoy the process. You have to really, really enjoy working on products, designing stuff, problem solving, doing all of these things together. And if you can't do that, then you're not going to stick through, right? Because you're going to be so maybe anxious or disappointed that you're not getting that outcome that you, in the moment you lose out on your learnings, you're right. You're not aware of what's happening around you. So the money is definitely useful and the money is great by the way, as a UI UX designer, but I would say you need to learn to enjoy the process. If it is a future point that you're, you know, waiting for, it might never happen. Right. But if you can in the, in <laughs> so cheesy in the now, right in the present moment, <laughs> if in the present moment, you know, you can focus on your process, you can focus on where am I right now? What's the gap and where do I want to be? If you can focus on that, then you will naturally outwork everything else because you're enjoying it, right? You're in that process. You want to get things done. So that is my answer. Yeah. For sure, bro. For sure. Look at my number of tabs. <laughs> um, it causes problems sometimes, but yeah, <laughs> going well. Great question as well from Priya, which is how do you figure out if the manager you're going to be working with is good? Very difficult, very difficult, especially if the manager doesn't have a personal brand, right? Now, of course, I'm not saying every manager should have a personal brand. There's a lot of great design leaders and design managers who are not active on social media, right? Maybe that's just more of their style, but they're really good, right? However, the ones who have personal brand have that advantage where they have discovery. People can discover a person and figure out, hey, I want to work with that person, right? So if you're a design leader or manager, do work on your personal brand for this reason. When you join a company and you're expected to hire, having a good personal brand can mean putting a tweet out and all these people who've been following you want to work with you. And that really is one of the things you're judged on. As a design leader, the quality of people that you can hire is something that you are responsible for. But the question here was, how does a person applying figure out whether it's the work person working with is good or not? Ideally, you know, look through their personal brand if they're interested in the, if they're in, if they are interesting to you, right? That's the number one positive signal. But beyond that, the interview process, one thing to keep in mind is interview is a back and forth. It's not just them evaluating you, right? A lot of people have this mindset of, you know, I'm just a lowly intern, my placements clear bet how, please mujhe kuch job de do, right? It's not like that. An interview process is a two way. You are deciding if you want to work there as well because you might find a better opportunity, right? Why shouldn't you go for the best opportunity you can get? It's a two way process. So you will, during that interview, have to do something to figure out, right? You will get some sense of their vibe. The questions you ask based on how they respond to you, are they defensive? Do they attack your question, right? Um, do they deflect your question or are they open? Are they willing to engage? Even if they think you're wrong, are they willing to walk through and explain it? Right? These are some nuances. Now, I can't give you a solid answer for how you do this. You just have to do it. But these are some of the things that you should be looking for. And ideally, you want a manager who doesn't try to control you, like micromanage, like do this, do exactly this. But somebody who gives you a direction saying, explore in that direction, I give you some freedom. And the feedback will help you set this out but I want you to explore. I want you to figure this out, right? Somebody who gives you that room to explore um, would be a really good manager, but it's very hard to find this out. <laughs> um, of course, personal brand is one to wrap it up. Personal brand is one, the interview process is another. And the third, the very simple one that most people do not do, reference check, right? You as somebody who's joining a company should reference check the company. 
you should reference check the team you should try to speak to other people who have worked with that person with that manager um and maybe the team as well so it doesn't need to be some solid heavy process but just speak to someone right and maybe outside the interview process maybe through cold dming or through a personal reference the way um the way i've seen this happen typically is since we have a lot of mentors who are at some of these big companies right so for example um whatever i'm not going to take names but we have a, since we have a bunch of people who are at these amazing companies they probably have in their past worked at other companies too so one of the reasons we're so 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 focused on the alumni part of what we're doing is eventually or rather it's already happening we want to get to a point where any company you want to join you have somebody from 10k designers who sort of works there and you can just dm them saying hey how is it there and uh, not just that but this is really useful for referrals something that people um not too familiar with is um some companies or a lot of companies actually offer referral bonuses if you can refer someone who's good so we try to do that uh, within the cohort a lot yeah So we'll do a little bit more, and then we're going to wrap up in the next five minutes. Oof. Hmm. Let's take a few more questions. Um. Let's take this one. This is a little broad. How has product thinking evolved over the last three years? How far can the industry keep going? One thing we've realized, Shashank, is that the definition of what it is to, of what a designer is and what a designer does, is changing at a rapid pace, right? The expectations, the kind of things they do, is changing. So I can give you just one small uh, example to talk about how this is changing. Webflow, right? Webflow. I can actually show you a real example of this as well. Webflow, because Webflow exists, designers are now able to create products and do the code as well, which is it's a no-code tool. And now you might think no-code is more of a thing for side projects, for side hustles. But with no-code, you as a designer can now extend your abilities. You can do a lot more than just than than you could with just design. So an example of this. I want to show you from an academy. This feature, for example, I think um, that is my hand, and this is Chetan. This feature that we launched this was sort of like a year in review type of feature. You see these animations, all of this stuff. This was actually designed in Figma, built without code in Webflow. and what we were able to do was export that code give it to the developers and all they had to do was integrate all they had to do was integrate where exactly these this data comes from integrating the apis so very interestingly the feature looks more the future looks more and more full stack <laughs> the future looks more and more full stack which is designers are developing superpowers because of these kind of tools So the just close my window. Designers are developing these superpowers, right? With these tools, it's almost like you have a transformer suit. You were able to do some stuff, move around, but now you can do so much more. So, I'm very excited about that because not just within companies, being able to, you know, something like this what exactly does it do it doesn't take away work from developers it just means the developers focus on other stuff and of course we can't do this for everything right not entire products can be built with no code yet but designers are getting way more designers are getting super powerful let me just say that designers are getting way more op than they ever were before um so i think what will happen is as designers become more full stack they can do more things a lot of them will start um their own projects as well their own side hustles their own maybe saas maybe some kind of tools that they build 
And what that means overall for the industry is designers become, are able to exercise their creativity in multiple ways. Rather than just doing it for your company, you can now do these three, four things which become parallel streams of your income. So you're not just dependent on one uh, stream of income. Yeah. Final question from Nishant, super chat. Worked in problem solving roles. Should I go for an internship or should I go for junior designer roles? Nishant, you go for the best opportunity available. It does not matter whether you go for X or Y. It matters that you know, it matters that you have that self-awareness that this is where I am. This is a gap and this is where I want to be. This is what I consider amazing design. So number one is self-awareness. And number two is understanding what is the best opportunity I can find for myself at this point, right? You ideally don't want to settle for any opportunity. However, you know, that can also be experience. That can also be experience. So there is no right answer. The answer is you need to have that self-awareness to figure out where you are and then where the industry is and find that overlap. So thank you for that folks. And thank you, Janardhan, for your third or fourth super chat today. Appreciate the support. Um, for anybody who is new here, who has questions to ask, I'm just going to give you all a reminder. We have a channel. Oops, this is the wrong, uh, <laughs> wrong server. We have a channel called Newbie Zone and alumni chat. If you are interested in speaking to alumni, including Janardhan, in fact. Check out alumni chat, post your questions here. Um, of course, we try to be active. There's different mentors here. You can, of course, on the right side here, check out the mentors who are online. You can see the alumni here as well. If you want to really talk to them, ask them questions. Um, but yeah, please use this channel. With that, folks, uh, we're going to wrap up. This has been an amazing session. Um, I enjoy doing this back and forth. Tomorrow, we will return with a different session. We're going to be talking one of our scheduled sessions, in fact. And we're going to be going a lot deeper into this. So with that, I need to um, <laughs> give me a sec. With that, thank you all for joining and I'll see you soon tomorrow, but also somewhere else on the internet. Bye-bye.